Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at some of the new features in Lightroom 8.1. Hey folks, Lightroom 8.1 come out and it's kind of a couple of small features and one big feature, a feature that's been requested for a long, long time. So let's dive in and take a look. So the first feature I'm going to talk about is the actual develop module now has an option where if we right click on any panel header, we get this option to customize the develop uh, panel. All right, so what we can do now is we can just drag stuff around. So if you want a tone curve up on top, say, Let's say you go lens corrections next, generally, and transform. So this could be like a, so for instance, if you're doing architecture, you might want to do those ones first before anything else. You might only rarely do uh, split toning or calibration, but you might do effects after black and white. And um, so you may work in this order here, for example. So you click save, right? So you need to relaunch for this to work. So I'm going to do a relaunch and I'll come back to Lightroom when it's relaunched. So we're back here now with Lightroom and we can clearly see that we are in a completely different order than we were before. So again, if we right click on a panel header at any point, we can go default order and save and it'll bring us back to the default order. So as you can see now, we're now back to the default order. So that is the first kind of major thing which has been requested for a long, long time. The next feature is something that has been an import for a while, but it's not been an auto import. And so if we go to auto import and we go to auto import settings, we now have an option here to add to collection. So when you bring stuff in, it can automatically be added to a collection. And so you can create a collection as well as adding to one that's already existing. So let's say just add it to the quick collection, for example. Click OK. So now when auto import starts, stuff will now go to that collection. The next thing is in book. If we are in books, let's jump over to book. This is my first time using book because we've obviously just restarted, so it'll take a second. So I will just get stuff set up in book and come back to you. So now I have two images set up here. So we now have an option with snap. Right? So we can snap to the grid and we can snap to cells. Right? So this option to snap to cells allows us to move the image about. Uh, grab from the center here and it will snap to whatever is there cell wise. So that way it can jump to exactly line up. We know that the stuff is lined up there, should be wanted. So as we can see, it's snapping to the edge so that we've lined up these photos here, basically. So we can see that it's now snapped there as well. If you wanted to snap to the grid, um, it's going to show the page grid to do that. And then you can move around and you will see that as we grab from this yellow handle, it will snap along the grid itself. So we can see that it's fitting in the grid which gives us a way of kind of doing more kind of off-center placements as well. But we still know that there's an even amount being matched up when the cells are the same size. That's snapping to grid. So let's go now from book into develop. We have presets open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new preset, shift command N. Now there's nothing done to this, right? So let's say I check all and I'm going to call this. Um, I'm just going to call it duplicate. It's not a duplicate, we're just calling a duplicate. And we can put this inside our own group. So we can, let's call this um, test group just for this. So we've created this one here. So now let's create a new preset again. Shift Command and just the same exactly again. I'm going to call it duplicate. And normally this will give you a warning to say that it's the same. Click Create. So we now have this option that comes up a preset named duplicate already exists in this group. How do you want to proceed? Replace, duplicate, or rename. So it's giving you an option to deal with it. Now, personally, I don't know why you'd want to duplicate something with exactly the same name because it would obviously be confusing, but, but these are the options that you now have. Okay, so you could choose to rename it at this point, or you could choose to duplicate it, and then they will both show up in the group. Uh, because they're not physical files anymore with that kind of name, that's how it'll work for that. So I go to test group, we can see here that we have two presets called duplicate. And um, so just to let you know that that is there now. So now that's happening with presets is that you can have incompatible presets. So presets that uh, have a completely different profile or set of profiles you can't use, for example, uh, camera matching profiles where you have a Canon or a Fuji, 
and you're using the camera matching profile, so there's nothing there to say that they're um, dissimilar, so they are not compatible. So you can have an issue where the preset doesn't apply properly, so they are incompatible. And um, so we could, for example, be in library and not have stuff accessible inside um, the presets panel here. But what we can do here is we can go in, in inside here, we can go to preferences. It's in the edit menu on PC. So we come up here and we go to presets itself. You can see that we have this option here to show partially compatible developed presets. Now these would show up and be grayed out so that you can't use them just to let you know that there's something incompatible about them. So just to let you know that that's there. There are other things going on as well. Um, I'm just gonna jump down to HDR set for you. At least I hope of a HDR set here now. Merge the HDR. So this is that we've seen before. Here we have, if I press G, we can see we've got three images in a HDR set. Now these were shot with the same lens um, and are the same dimensions and all sorts of stuff like that. Before now in Lightroom, if you sh shot stuff with slightly different focal lengths, um, they would not merge. So now it doesn't matter about orientation, about focal length, or any of those kind of stuff. Lightroom will still attempt to merge them. Okay, so it's a lot more f forgiving than it used to be. It even will merge stuff that's different orientation. Just to let you know that that is possible as well. There is one other change, which I'm just going to show you here as well. Um, I'm just going to do a merge here. Uh, just a HDR, it's not a HDR panorama. Okay, so it's going to create the preview. Now, what normally happens is if you uh, make changes, Like it's building the preview there. So it's gone from, from none to high. So if I go back to none and I go back to high, you can see it's much quicker. So what it does is it caches the preview now. So you're not waiting as long. You saw that the initial preview build was longer. And now when I jump between the two of them, that it's actually really, really quick because it's actually cached the preview. And the other thing to mention here, which we saw on kind of in the, it's also in the right click, but in here we have this HDR panorama as a single step thing that can be done. That can also now be done using just smart previews. And um, just so to let you know that that is possible. While we're on the subject, I've now just put those offline. So I go to folder and library for a second here. And um, so this is the original folder. So this is currently offline. But now we have an option here to add color labels. So let's call this blue, for example, here. So we're now able to add color labels to offline folders as well. And um, just to show you that, because that's clearly offline at the moment. The other thing that's there now is if we go to quit. So Lightroom quit Lightroom. We now have this menu that says, do you really want to quit? you can click yes, or you can click cancel, or you can also click don't show again, so you never see it again. So when you quit, it just quits. So I'm just gonna click cancel here because I'm not actually quitting just right now. So folks, on top of that, there are also a few new things like cameras being added, stuff like the iPhone XS and things like that. Um, so let's pop over to the blog, .adobe.com to have a look at that, and you get more details from that, basically. So that's just been a very quick look at some of the new features that are in Lightroom 8.1. Obviously, the big thing is the panel reordering, which people have been asking for for years and years and years. To be honest with you, I'm so used to the way Lightroom is laid out, I'm not even going to bother to do that myself. Um, especially in the fact that I'm going to be teaching stuff. So if I'm doing tutorials, I really need them to be in the common order, the default order, so that people don't get lost as they're watching what I'm doing going, my panel is not there. So obviously, that's it. So folks, if you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, give it a, a like. I'm saying give it a like. I've already said give it a like. Share it, please. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you in the next video.